on the news tonight. Court fixes June the 3rd to hear suit against acting CJN Mohamed Tanko's appointment. In business, the federal government will no longer do business with AMCON debtors, and that's coming from the Vice President, Yemi Oshimbanjo. And on the foreign scene, deadly cholera outbreak kills African migrants in Yemen. Hello and welcome to Super Screen's flagship news. We're broadcasting to you live from Lagos State, Nigeria. I am Olamide Omukamani. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll begin with the story where the Federal High Court in Abuja has fixed June the 3rd for the definite hearing of a suit challenging the appointment of Justice Tanko Mohammed as Substantive Chief Justice of Nigeria, CJN. Justice Inyang Eko gave the date for the definite hearing of the suit after all pending processes were regularized. We will recall that President Mohamed Buhari appointed the Acting Chief Justice of Nigeria, Tanko Mohammed, after Justice Walter Nogin was suspended and later sacked as the CJN by the Code of Conduct Tribunal, CCT, for non-enforced asset declaration. In other stories, the African Action Congress, AAC, has handed its national chairman, Omoyale Shoure, and eight other executive committee members a six-month suspension. A communique read by a member of its National Executive Council, Okwe Ibe, indicated that the resolution is substantive of the party and activities also misappropriation of funds leveled against the affected members. The, subsequently, the party has appointed Lona Nzenwa as acting national chairman pending show a resby statement or election as a substantive national chairman by Congress. In view of the actions of the national chairman, Mr. Sowere Omolaye, the publisher of Sahara Reporters, he is hereby suspended as the national chairman of the African Action Congress, AAC, for a period of six months, beginning from 27th March 2019. Again, the deputy national chairman headquarters and the other eight members of NEC follows say. The NEC also resolved that Mr. Leonard, Dr. Leonard Nzangwa be and is hereby appointed to be the acting national chairman of this great party. Shawara was the 2019 presidential candidate of the African Action Congress, AAC. And now the Lone People's Democratic Party, PDP lawmaker in the Lagos State House of Assembly, Honorable Dipo Olonrinu, representing Amuwo Dofim 1, has defected to the All Progressives Congress, APC. The Honorable Olonrinu, who is the last man standing amongst the eight PDP lawmakers in the House, disclosed this in an interview with Super Screen's political editor, Adenike Uweye Ajiboye, in Lagos State. In the recent party of the faction of members of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, to the All Progressives Congress, APC, this latest the faction of the only PDP lawmaker in the late State House of Assembly is more shocking. Superscreen in an exclusive interview with Honorable Dikbo Olonrinu finds out the rationale behind his last minute decision. One of the reasons why I de defected was to join the progressive team. If you look at the All Progressive Congress, it's a party that understands the new dream and actualizing this new dream. I'm a young man. I want to be part of those that will achieve the new dream of Nigeria. Nigeria has been seen as an, un, as an undeveloped country and um, we were born into it, we were we are growing in it. Come on, we should be part of those that will take Nigeria 
to the next level. You will recall that Honorable Olorunrinu was among the eight PDP lawmakers in the House that stood alone with strong determination to continue with the PDP. But today, he has pitched a stand with the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC. He speaks on the internal problems limiting the success of PDP. I have been in PDP and I know that PDP is not a party to reckon with. For the chairman to have left and for my humble self to have left, it tells you that um, there are a lot of leadership, you know, issues like I mentioned. And, um, and um, survival is not something to debate about. In fact, and that's why you see I was boldly and confidently saying to the voters, I was giving out my words to the voters that they support the ruling party. Basically, and most especially because of the dividend of what their interest is. Honorable Dipo Olorino now joins the League of Key PDP members who have defected through the APC, among which are former Minister of State for Defense Musili Obanikoro, the former Lagos State PDP Chairman Moshud Salvador, former Minister of Works under former President Ulusha Ngobasajo Adeshaye Ogunlewe, amongst others. With this latest development, one might be tempted to feel that this is an attempt to make Lagos a one-party system. If it will cost us to have one-party system, I don't think the party is the issue. The issue is for us to keep looking back and seeing that we're no longer where we used to be. So even if it gets to the fact that we're saying to ourselves that, come, the APC should be the party in Lagos, then let then so it be. You will recall that the seven PDP lawmakers who defected then in 2017, precisely February 16, or the minority leader Akin Bailo, minority Whip Musumala Shongodara, Olushola Shokule, Jude Idimogu, Dayo Famakinwa, Fatai Uluwa, while Victor Akande defected precisely on July 10 of the same year. It remains to be seen how the PDP will receive this news, whether key members will also follow the same suit, only time will tell. At Denike Oweye Ajiboye, Super Screen News. And now the Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ngige, has inaugurated the new National Social Insurance Trust Fund and SIT board after a two-year delay. The minister, while inaugurating the new board in Abuja today, said the two-year delay in the inauguration is as a result of massive looting in the organization between 2012 and 2015. He also said between the period, the sum of 62.5 billion naira was contributed, out of which 48 billion was unaccounted for and 25 billion was withdrawn without vouchers. Ngigi, however, charged the new board to resist the temptation of fixing special allowances for themselves, urging them to execute their duties fairly and transparently. The Nigerian Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers, NUPENC, has described the inauguration of the new National Social Insurance Trust Fund, the NSITF board, as an attempt to suppress the organized labor in the country. Lupeng Deputy National President Olujide Kilanko disclosed this in an interview with Superscreen's Precious Amayo in Lagos. Kokori happened to be a target because he is a labor man. They believe that it cannot really be bought, it's rugged, uh, it cannot be pushed about. Whatever Kokori believes in, he wants to stand by it. And that may not go uh, well with the uh, Honorable Minister, the way I look at it. Maybe that's why I don't want to see his face, I don't want to see him in that panel. Honorable Minister will have come out and tell us this, this, and this are the reason. We look at it, if it's right, that no problem. Anybody trying to intimidate labor, uh, an individual in the labor organization is intimidating or trying to uh, fight the whole body of the labor unions worldwide and will, that will not be accepted. 
Kilanko explained that the picketing of the official residence of the Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ngige, is to discontinue the inauguration. He is also demanding an apology from the Labor Minister for the alleged attack on the Labor leaders. Why could Honorable Minister move inauguration to his house? Why did he try to move office to his own residence? Come and do inauguration. Do whatever I want to do in the office. He tried to stay in his house. And we believe that if you move your office to your house, we are coming there. We want apology for embarrassing the labor. He brought talks to attack labor. We went there, no weapons. You know, our slogan is just shouting, carry posters. Then he brought talks with arms to attack us. It's uncalled for. Nigerian men say the use of backpack is to keep their belongings safe, partly because of the high level of insecurity facing the country. They expressed this view in an interview with Mudukbe Abidoe in Lagos State. Which is also known as backpack, is a bag used in carrying belongings on your back. It is usually used by people who go on camping, walking, same as hikers and students while some use backpack for fashion just to complement their outfits. Others use it for carrying heavy loads or equipment because of the limited capacity to carry heavy weights for a long period of time in their hands. These Nigerians speak on their choice of using backpack rather than a wallet. Men, they have many things to do. And most of them, they are engineers. And they use it to pack their loads. Like myself, I'm an engineer. I have my tools here. And uh, I can't use ordinary ports or let me say ordinary wallet to pack my shoes, and that's why I'm using this. I think it's for comfort. Like myself, um, I'm a photographer, so I'm more comfortable with my camera being behind me than hanging it down. So I prefer it being at my back than by the side. Like um, if I have a wallet now, um, I, I want to be too sure for my pocket. It, it could be picked. But, but I have so much money here, it, it will hardly be picked. If we have it right, right in the back here, than, than the wallets. They, however, urge the federal government to work on improving security in the country. Security starts from individual, not from the federal government. I can go moving from here to Oshodi, I can't just place my store over my hand. It's somehow Although, even placing it in, in hand, you are putting it in a very severe condition. You know you are what? You are with it personally. Nobody can, before they can even collect it from you, at least you, know, you will know. I think I'm going to somewhere like uh, Oshodi. I can't just take my laptop on my hand and go to that place. And because of levels of insecurity in Nigeria, they can hijack it from you. That's it. They should change the systems. They should do something on the systems. The sector, the security sector in Nigeria, they are not good. It's not fine at all. It's not doing, they're not doing well. What I have to say here is the federal government knows what exactly is our problem. So I'm standing here to advise them to do the needful. Until the needful is done, we continue to have insecurity problem. To me, the security aspect of this country is out of it. So people, the government should work on the security of the country. Since bag is as old as man, regardless of the form and size, it will definitely serve the purpose of easing the burden of carrying too many things at the same time. Mudukbe Abidoye, Super Screen Television. And now the National Association of Nigerian Students, NANS, has issued a 48-hour ultimatum to the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board JAM to reform the 15-hour short messaging service and the charges back to the candidates and the students. Nance, in a statement by its national president, Abdul Majid Razak, Uyeni called on the board to send the examination results directly to the candidates since it adds their database. Uyeni also said, in the same community, computer-based tests should be well planned before execution to cater for the purpose it was invented for. The National Students Body further warned that the board will face the wrath of students nationwide if the money is not refunded in 48 hours. 
The Nigerian undergraduate Zainab Aliu, who was freed to, of drug charges in Saudi Arabia, has returned to the country. The senior special assistant to the president, Mohamed Buhari, on foreign relations and diaspora, Abike Dabiri, will confirm that return, applauded the president for his intervention. He will recall that Zainab, a student of Maitama Sule University, Kano, was arrested after a banned drug, Tramadol, was found in a luggage at the airport. Coming up tonight in Super Screen's flagship news, the federal government will no longer do business with Amcon debtors, and that's coming from the Vice President, Yemi Oshibanjo. We'll bring you details of this story in business and many more after this break. Welcome back to Super Screen's flagship news and now for some business stories. Vice President Yemi Oshimbanjo says the federal government will deal decisively with individuals and organizations that made the list of high profile debtors of the Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria, AMCO. Oshimbanjo, who disclosed this in Abuja, said the federal government has made it impossible for the corporation to resolve its outstanding 51 trillion naira debt thereby holding the entire nation to ransom with their bad behavior. He also said plans have been made by the government to set up an interagency collaboration framework that will comprise relevant government ministries, departments and agencies and supervised by its office to ensure that the institutions and individuals are indebted to outcome and not allowed to do business with the government. Still talking business, members of the Trade Union Congress, TUC, are protesting nationwide for the removal of the managing director of the Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN, Usman Mohammed. The union is accusing the TCN boss of poor handling of staff welfare as well as intimidation of its members. In Edo State, the labor leaders met resistance from the management and staff of the Transmission Company who insisted that they were not duly carried along before embarking on the action. Meanwhile, in Anugu, the unionists also besieged the office of the TCN, asking for the withdrawal of queries issued to senior officers, review of all promotions, transfers, and sanctions, amongst other demands. And still in business, the African Developmental Bank, AFDB, says it has approved $200 million to boost Nigeria's electrification project, particularly the off-grid expansion being implemented by the Rural Electrification Agency, RFA. The AFDB said the project is expected to provide electricity to households, medium, small and micro enterprises and public institutions in general. In a last communique, the AFDB said the proposed project will support the federal government's aim of increasing electricity access and defined in the National Development Agenda, adding that in order to meet the government's targets, the country will have to embrace both on-grid and off-grid expansion. Still ahead tonight in Superscreen's flagship news, the deadly cholera outbreak hits African migrants in Yemen. That's on the foreign scene. We'll bring you details of this story and many more after this break. Stay with us.